603. Um, we're going to have the prayer by Miss uh, Broussard. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that you give us to all gather around and try to do the work of our parish and the work of you, Lord. We just ask for you to give us wisdom and guidance to make decisions that are uh, in the best interest of our community and that's pleasing to you, Lord. Uh, give us all mutual respect for each other and, and those that we're serving uh, and uh, just be with us and uh, help guide us tonight. Lord, we ask a special blessing uh, for the victims in our community of this uh, past week, uh, several different uh, incidences that's been happening in our community. We ask special blessings on our military, Lord, the ones that are serving now and the ones that have served. We just ask you uh, to keep our troops safe, Lord. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The pledge by Mr. Gonsolin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Tommy Pollard. Here. Michael Landry. Here. Tommy Landry. Lloyd Brown. Here. Warren Goshesang. Here. Natalie Broussard. Here. Paul Landry. Here. Ricky Gonsalam. Here. Joe Duga. Here. Eugene Olivier. Here. Brian Napier. Here. Berwick Francis. Here. Marty Traha. Here. Chad Montreal. Brian's in the back. Okay, we have a quorum. Um, I need a motion to go into public comments. I have a motion by Mr. Gonsolin, a second by Mr. Trahan. Roll call. Just roll it up. Uh, that motion passes. We're now in public comments. Item number one, public comments from the general public on non-agenda items. Um, we have no notes. Item number two, uh, comments from the general public on agenda items. Um, the first one we have is from Mr. Jack Killifton. He's going to talk on special business for the Office of Constable of Ward 3. Mr. Jack, if you come to the podium, please. Okay. Oh, no, they hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got a. I got a big mouth. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, like I said, I, uh, I'm, I'm committed to this area. Uh, I'm, I'd like to see this place grow and expand. Uh, and I'd like serving. I currently serve on the uh, sewer commission. I'm the chairman there. I've worked with uh, Mr. Yeah. Paul Landry quite a couple of years now, and uh, we've had some pretty good successes there. Uh, and I'm just hoping that uh, maybe I've shown the uh, people that I'm here for the duration, no matter what. Uh, and I appreciate uh, you taking me into consideration when this uh, appointment is uh, comes available. Again, does uh, anybody have any questions, uh, Mr. Jack? Okay, Mr. Eugene. How long have you been a resident of I moved in almost a year ago. It'd be a year ago next month. <clears throat> So it'll be a year in July? Uh, yes. <clears throat> I'd been, prior to that, I'd been on Bonnet Street uh, for mm -hmm. about 10 years. Uh, so I've been, and, and I've been and here most of my life. I grew up in Generet. Uh, Mr. Napier could vouch for that. We, uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah, I know. I didn't really know what to say that, but, you know. <laughs> now, uh, what, what, what district uh, is Bonnet Street for you? Three and five. 
Well, it, part of uh, Bonnet Street is in District 6, and part of that uh, from Miss Natalie is is in this, so you might be able to add a few years to that. So. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, any other questions? Good. Well, thank you, Jack. Thank you for coming forward, and thanks all right. for all you've done for us already. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, you Jack. Uh, the next item is agenda number five, Ms. Darlene French requesting appointment to the 16th Judicial Children Youth Planning Board. Is Ms. French here? Okay. Uh, not seeing Ms. French. Uh, we'll now ask for a motion to go back in regular committee. We, we have a motion by Mr. Gonsolet, a second by Mr. Olivier. Roll call. And that motion passes. Uh, now we're on to reports, finance, and administration act, action. Item number one, balance sheet for April 2018 on request and budget report for April 2018 on request. Uh, reports, parish, and other governmental agencies. Monthly building report dated uh, May 2018 is in your packet. Public works report. Public Works Department report for closed work orders dated May 14th to 18th, 21st to 25th, and May 28th to June 1st, 2018 was in your packet. Uh, special business item number one, Iberia Parish Government announces that the Office of Constable Justice of the Peace Ward 3 of Iberia Parish, the Lower Valeria, will become vacant as of July 1st, 2018. Applications for an intern appointment will be accepted from June 14th to the 29th, 2018. Interested persons should contact the clerk of the council for appointments. Um, I think we got a little um, sign up there, and what it'll show you is the uh, at the bottom. So District 6 has um, three and precincts three and five. Um, District 7 has 3 and 5, District 8 has 1 and 2 and 3, uh, 9 has 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, and District 11 has 3, 4 and 8. So that's where it makes up Ward 3. Any questions? Uh, we go ahead and, go ahead, Ms. Eugene. How much do you work to fund with the qualifications of that position if possible? Okay. All right, thank you. I did prepare something. I'm going to email it to y'all tomorrow. All right, duties. thank you. And job duties. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Mr. Eugene, we just got this in last, yeah, last I, week. Yeah, I realize and, that. I just want to make sure. No, 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 we did. Uh, yeah. To get it uh, to get it put on tonight's agenda and uh, everything, so it, uh, we got the, the notice the right morning so that we could move on with everything. Yeah, okay. Ms. Right. Bruce Arch going to go ahead and read it for us. The qualifications is there shall be one constable for the court of each justice peace in the several parishes of the state who shall be of good moral character, be able to read and write the English language, possess a high school diploma or its equivalent as determined by the State Board of Elementary and Secondary Education, and be an elector and resident of the ward or district from which elected. However, the requirement of a high school diploma or, or its equivalent does not apply to any constable who was in office as a constable or elected to the office of constable on or before November 19, 1995 uh, in terms of his qualifications to remain in office or to seek re-election to a consecutive term. Um, beginning with the year 2018, to qualify, you shall not have attained the age of 70 years old by the date of qualification to run for office. And it's a six-year term. Okay, so uh, we'll go all get this in an email from Ms. Uh, Brenda. So uh, now we're on to council member announcements. Um, we have Ms. Agasha Okay, go ahead. The process that we're going to do is going to be similar to like the tax of the board registration. Right, right. Right. Okay, just want to make sure. I don't know if you said that was a year. I did. She, she's asking if we'll we'll bring in each one of the candidates to interview, like we did for the uh, register of voters. I just, I'll, I just request that 
Okay. Council members come with their own questions. No, that's good. Okay. All right. Okay, council member announcements. Uh, anything else, Mr. Gashisan? Okay, does anybody else have any questions? Okay, moving on to parish president's announcements. Mr. Richard? A letter from the Department of Transportation uh, in reference to a resolution 2017-158. This is in reference to signal timing at US 90 ramp in Lewis Street. Uh, from, to the Iberia Parish Council regarding the possibility of, of evaluating the traffic signals at the off-ramp of US 90 at Lewis Street, Iberia Parish, the following information is submitted. Our district traffic engineer has evaluated the signal timing and operation of Lewis Street coordinated signal system that include US 90 eastbound ramp, <coughs> the US 90 westbound ramp, and LA 83. It should be noted that these signals were upgraded after the date of the council request as part of a district-wide uh, signal project. District 3 traffic operation collect peak, turning, uh, peak hours uh, turning movement count and rain analysis for this signal system. It was not recommended that any timing change be made at this time. However, it should be mo noted that the vehicle detention system were upgraded as a part of the project. Uh, detention should be um, more reliable with less vehicles delayed due to the upgrades. The other thing I want to talk about is um, the two projects that's still being funded by the um, capital outlay program. We still have the access road uh, with the $4.267 million that w that's being funded uh, for the five lane access road or the, or the access road at the airport. That's a big deal. I guess you guys know that we didn't get that last year and we had a meeting where a few of us went to uh, Baton Rouge last year and speak with the governor and so far it's still on track. The Robert B. Green building is also on track uh, at, at a tune of $348,000. So we're moving forward with those two pro uh, projects. And that's about all I'm going to talk about tonight. Thank you. OK, thank you, Mr. Richard. Um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to move on to uh, summary number 116, since we have some celebrities in the <coughs> audience. Summary number 116, introduced by Joel Dugard, District 9, a resolution of congratulations to Lauraville High baseball team on winning the LHSAA class. 2A state championship held in SOFA. Come on up, Mr. Rob. <laughs> we have, have Mr. Yeah, you can stand at the podium and talk. And Mr. Mr. Okay. We take a roll call. We have a motion by Mr. Duga, a second by Mr. Gonsalan. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Duga. Of course, everybody knows that Lover won the 2A state baseball championship this year. And in the audience tonight representing the school is uh, Coach Rob Segur, his wife, Jolene Segur, Assistant Principal, Mr. David Broussard, and Assistant Coach, Mr. Jamal Lewis. Uh, you know, everybody knows that our public school system is getting tougher and tougher. These guys are expected to be coaches, mentors, teachers. They teach character. Coach Rob has done an excellent job of building character in these young. And then over the years, guess what happens? You win a state championship. That's, That's just right. the benefit of what he does as a coach. Um, the good thing here, Coach, is that you can never, ever win the first ever state championship again. So congratulations. Yeah. Proud of you and, and uh, hope to see another one come around. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Richard? And I want to tell you the night that we had the celebration at the Lauraville High School, it was phenomenal. They had so many people out there. And for council information, I did uh, prepare a proclamation and I read it to uh, the school. And we did give certificates to the coach and the coaching staff. So it was a very big deal. They had a lot of people there. I really enjoyed it, uh, being there with you guys. And um, let's do it again next year. <laughs> We're going to try. <laughs> all, right, all right. Thank you all for having us. Thank you all very much. Okay, roll call. Okay, we have a unanimous second by Mr. Gosh Roll call. 
and motion passes. Okay, consent agenda items for public hearing and adoption, the minutes, the regular meeting minutes of April 25th, 2018, published on May 22nd, 2018, the regular meeting of May 9th, 2018, published on June 7th, 2018, summary number 113, introduced by the parish president, a resolution granting the authority to the parish president to sign and submit all necessary documents along with adopting certain policies, plans, and procedures in connections with the fiscal year 2018 community development block grant program for sewer system improvement. Summary number 114 introduced by the clerk of the council, a resolution endorsing the application of MA safety services for the Louisiana Enterprise Zone program. Um, is there any of the items that anyone would like taken out? See. Okay, um, one second, Ms. Uh, Brenda has to make a comment. Okay, on the minutes of May 9th, for ordinance number 2018-05-4904, which was one of the millages for the public library system at 3.50, the vote on the substitute was in error in the minutes. Um, I showed Natalie Broussard and Brian Napier as absent when Tommy Pollard and Berwick Francis were absent, so that needs to be corrected for the minutes. Okay. Um, so we have to substitute motion. Okay. We need to remove it from the consent agenda items and then do a okay. motion so, to amend them. Okay, so we're going to be pulling out the minutes and Mr. Napier? Yeah. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to pull out uh, 4919. Oh, that's it's not in. in. <laughs> no, that's going to be in the ordinances. Okay, so we're going to. So we're going to go ahead and. Uh, okay, um, we uh, we're going to go to Mr. Uh, Gonsalam, Mr. Gonsalam. I make I make a motion. I make a motion to remove summary number. Minutes. Minutes. The minutes from the consent agenda item to be discussed at a full council meeting. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and uh, vote on summary number 113 and 114. And, right. I had uh, a motion by uh, Mr. Gonsolin and a second by Mr. Olivier. Roll call. No, this is to vote on the other ones. Okay. So we're finished with that. We'll go back to the minutes and we have a motion by Mr. Gonsolin. And a second by Mr. Olivier. Mr. Gonsolin? I just want the minutes to reflect, as the clerk uh, stated, uh, to correct the errors that were stated as the absentee vote, absentee uh, votes on the library issue. Okay. Uh, Mr. Olivier, are you fine with that? With that? Okay. Uh, any other discussion? Uh, roll call. Uh, that motion passes. Now we move on to ordinance summary number 4913, introduced by Warren P. Gashasan, District 5, an ordinance amending Chapter 15 of the Compiler Ordinances of Iberia Parish, Louisiana, by adding additional sections thereto relating to the registration, installation, and operation of burglar alarms in commercial <coughs> buildings or structures to provide for the effective date thereof to otherwise provide respect thereof. Note this was tabled from the May 23rd, 2019 Iberia Parish meeting. I have a motion by Ms. Broussard, a second by Mr. Gashisam. Ms. Broussard? Yeah, it's my understanding that we have a little bit um, left to work out with the sheriff. I think the sheriff has been in contact with the administration, so uh, we need a little bit more time. Yes. After discussion, I'll be requesting it to be tabled yes, for uh, one more right. round. Uh, the Sheriff Department, Richard Hazelwood, asked that we table this until July the 11th. Uh, they want to meet with both legal advisors that, uh, from the Sheriff Department as well as the um, uh, Paris government. Okay. So after discussion, I'll be moving to table it to July 11th. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gashasan. Oh, wait, Mr. Chair. Okay. Any further discussion? Yeah, just a We'll be voting on the substitute motion to table till July 11th. I'm moving to table it. I need a second. Oh. Okay. I, uh, I have a second by Mr. Olivier. <laughs> Any further discussion? Roll call.
That motion passes. Summary number 4916, introduced by Warren P. Gosh Hassan, District 5, an ordinance amending Chapter 2 of the Iberia Parish compiled ordinances to require a section to be included on the council agenda relating to the approval of the agenda. I have a motion by Mr. Gosh Hassan and a second by Michael Landry. Mr. Gosh Hassan. Wave. Okay, Mr. Michael Landry. Wave. Um, let's see, we're going up to uh, Mr. Olivier next. I still have a problem with this uh, agenda item. I just don't see the value of it, of having to approve the agenda before the meeting and delete what's on the agenda. I think each of us that puts something on the agenda has the right for a discussion point to talk about whatever we want to put on the agenda. Uh, I just don't see the advantage of doing that. If, if, if one of my constituents asks me to put something on the agenda to discuss at this meeting and y'all decide at the beginning of the meeting to delete it, uh, I think it's unfair to my constituent that y'all do so. And we have a, a mechanism in place already where uh, our chair, which is Paul Landry, if, when he reviews the agenda on, on Thursday and Friday, he can pull out anything he wants on this agenda. You know, his authority can do that. Each of us as finance chair can do the same thing on the, on the, on the committee agenda items. So I, I really think this is just not necessary and I, I won't be uh, voting for this particular change. Thank you. Okay, um, well, I'm pretty much um, echoing Mr. Olivier's uh, feelings. Um, I think we have a process. I think it's worked fine, and, and um, even though I have the authority to take it off, I really wouldn't take anybody off. I believe we should go through a discussion period, and uh, I know, I, like Eugene, I would feel upset that if I, I wanted something to at least talk about, and then I got kicked off at the beginning. So um, I'm going to be a, a negative with um, Mr. Eugene. Um, next up, we have Ms. Broussard. Yeah, you know, I had uh, gotten with Mr. Garshison and understood what, what his reasoning were, but, you know, the last meeting when we discussed this and I heard from Mr. Olivier where he says, um, you know, this, this stops discussion. Um, I have a problem with it as well. I'm with Mr. Olivier on there. I get when it's something that's repetitively being put on the agenda, but we've already uh, passed an ordinance that, if it failed, it can't go back on the agenda for six months. So I think we kind of took care of that problem. Um, I don't want to stifle anybody. I don't want anybody not to be able to, to have a discussion and to stop <coughs> discussion before it happens. And we never even get to hear somebody's point, I think is a, an issue. But more than that, this is a published agenda. It's, it's not something that came off before it went out to the public. It's a published agenda. And so if you have anybody here from the, the uh, public who's wanting to talk on it and they take their time to come out here and talk to us and then boom, before uh, anything happens, it's removed. I just don't think that's, that's fair. So I'm with you, Mr. Eugene, on, on not supporting this item. Okay, uh, Mr. Gosh, Quick question, Mr. Chairman. If, if, if I wanted to put something on the agenda, let's just say you, you didn't want me to have it on the agenda, so where, where would be the recourse on that for me to have an opportunity to come back before the council to make an agenda uh, of approval? I mean, personally, personally. I, I'm just saying, you, hypothetically, I'm just yeah. asking for our checks and balance system here. You know, I know Mr. Eugene There's Olivier made a reference about something that this is not we're not trying to do in the ordinance situation i think andy can exceed a little more on it about what we talked about uh, I, I don't think it's being a tactic that something repeatedly or we're trying to cut off anybody's debate i mean this is for let's say down the road someone's sitting in here and their, their agenda items last on the agenda and we decide at the end of the night that we uh, we don't want to vote on it at night we want to table it so what, what, what would be the to just to have those people sit here through the whole night if we can get it done in at the beginning of it just like we did earlier about tabling something waiting for the administration to come back with the information that could have been done at the beginning of the meeting just like the consent agenda and that would take time off from having a council to go through that whole deal of debate when we knew we were going to table it anyways so if someone can just come back and rebuttal on that that'd be nice 
Well, may, maybe the dis discussion wasn't germane, but um, I think it would just be more open to the public that you see something on the agenda, they show up, and then we just kill it right away without allowing the discussion part. But I think there's a part of the <coughs> chapter that, that can't the council override the chairman putting things on the agenda? It's more about managing your <coughs> agenda. Mm. And what my thoughts were is that many times you may have something on the agenda um, through discussions or through additional information. Mm. You decide, well, we're not ready to deal with this yet, or we need additional information or whatever. And, and approving the agenda ahead of time is a way to manage that agenda. For, for instance, the one that I always use is, if again, and Mr. Gotchisan referred to it, is that if you have people who come up here to speak on a particular matter, and, and you know that you need more time or you're not ready to do that, then you can delete it there, and they don't sit here during an entire meeting waiting for it to get there. Remember that approving that agenda would take a majority vote. So, I don't think it's going to be used. To, well. Uh, I don't want to have to deal with that, so let's, let's take it off because it's going to take again, Eight uh, votes. you know, a majority of the council to agree to either l let's deal with the agenda as written, or do we have additions to the agenda, or do we have uh, uh, deletions to the agenda? It, it and it just seems to me it's a little bit better, a little bit easier to manage if you do it on the it, front it, just end. at the front. It, it's not intended. At least it was not my intention. Yeah. I don't think it was Mr. Gotchisan's either, to either, you know, say that you can't bring something up or anything else. It's just a method of managing. If you, most public bodies, most legislative bodies have a section mm -hmm. at the start of their meeting approval to, to approve the, agenda. the official journal. Right. Uh, anyway, just. I guess those and, would be my comments. And Mr. Chairman, just to finish up about the, the you know, you saying Jermaine, it was Jermaine because there could have been people that were coming here about the alarm systems that we talked about earlier, and now they would have known at the beginning that we were tabling it because the Sheriff's Department had additional information that they wanted to gather from legal. So it would be Jermaine to the situation. I reserve. Uh, Mr. Brown. Yeah. You know, whoever put anything on the agenda, they have a good idea of what's going to happen to it. And, and uh, they can talk to the people to let them know, look, I can't, if I put this on the agenda, I'm not sure because of what I'm hearing, because they make calls. They make calls to find out what, what's going to go on. And, and they can tell them then what, what's going to go on, whether it's this, this meeting or the following meeting. <coughs> so uh, I, I'm with Eugene. Uh, if it go on there, it, I don't think we need to kill it uh, before discussing it. Uh, Mr. Napier. So I'm just trying to understand, Andy, I'm going to refer to you if you don't mind. So if this passes, there's going to be a, a spot on the, uh, on the agenda in the beginning where the council approves the agenda? I mean, they'll be right in the beginning yeah, on, on I, here? My if you were going to put it on there, I would probably put it after roll call. Okay, instance. so you cannot add stuff to the agenda, but you can. No, you uh, could, but it would take, it, to add actually takes a unanimous decision. So that, that, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. So all this time when we wanted, when something was added, we had to add it at the end, and we had to have, so you're saying we could come here if something pops up today that needed to be talked about tonight with me, I could come in without the chairman or anybody knowing, and I could say, hey, I would like to add blah, blah, whatever. And then it would be up to the council to approve that. Yeah. Just like that. Let's talk about add-ons and taking off. Let's just start with add-ons. Remember, the, the add-ons are going to be governed by state law. And the state law says in order for you, after you've published your agenda, in order for you to add to it, it takes unanimous consent. And, and I'm, 
I'm, I'm reluctant to have the council add any more items than necessary because and you're going to have emergencies. I don't care how prepared you are, you're going to have situations that something comes up and you need to add it to the agenda. But if you do it willy-nilly often, then you're going to open yourself up to criticism that, that you're really using uh, uh, amendments to your agenda to defeat letting the public know what you're going to talk about you, you know it's it's really pretty rare when this council adds something to the agenda i mean I, I, look I, I think you do an excellent job of trying to ensure that you don't add any more than necessary right but you know if you have a grant opportunity <laughs> for a million dollars and you have a and short we, deadline we got to do it yeah. then, then you know look that's a perfectly legitimate reason why you would want to add so to it that was my I would just yeah. using that so and and that probably won't happen but so I started with that now going back to what Mr. Gosha said what to do so at that point if there was um, uh, something on there that any one of us didn't want to discuss like say tonight we could ask the council to consider taking that item off Am I am I understanding this whole situation? Yeah, here, here's what, it's that simple. Pretty with much. But here, here's what here's what would happen with a majority <coughs> vote. Eight yeah, eight votes. Yeah. You're gonna. I, I bet you. Let's see. If you have 24 meetings a year, I, I bet you 23 <laughs> out of 24 of the meetings, you're gonna have a motion to approve the agenda as written. So move, vote, move on. There may be. A small number of meetings in which you have something on there either that again you're not ready to deal with or for whatever reason and and you say the motion would be somebody's gonna make a motion uh, to approve the agenda is written somebody's gonna say I, I, I want to have a substitute motion and I want to remove item number so-and-so D then you could do that and, and if I'm here to speak on item number 32 which happens to be the last one and it's removed and I know yeah, yeah. It, look, if I want to stay and watch great if, if I came specifically for that purpose I don't have to sit here and wait that it's just another management tool and, and I think I, I just want to add one other thing <clears throat> y'all have done an outstanding job of, of managing your meetings I, I mean you've gone from lengthy lengthy meetings yeah. to yeah. meetings if you get to the point you deal what you got and, and so just another tool just, to yeah. help you manage your meetings it, it, it's not meant to try to stifle anybody's ability to I got you bring thank you mr. Sheila okay. so the, one last thing I just wanted to ask mr. Olivia so with, with what he just said I don't I don't want to if, if a majority vote has to occur I'm just wondering why do you feel that way, Eugene? I, 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 no, I'm missing something. I just would think. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, I'm I'm asking you. Well, I, I, the chair's got to recognize me. Okay? I'm recognizing. <laughs> 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 I'll recognize it. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Lady. <laughs> okay. About you. I, I want to be the fair with every council member that's sitting at, at this at this council chamber. You know, if, if we bring something up and want to put on the agenda, it goes through committee and it comes to full council. It, it should be discussed in full council. You know, we got a chance to delete anything in committee that we want to before it comes to full council. So if, if it's an item that we feel that in committee that it shouldn't move to full council, well, we don't we don't move it to full council. I think it's putting another step in here that's really unnecessary. And, and I really think it, it breaks a fine line where it comes to the open meeting laws. Uh, I mean, we, we here we're discussing an agenda item before we come to a meeting and we decide we're going to delete it before we, when we get here. Uh, I, I, I'm just a little touchy for me. Okay? Not, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. I just right. wanted yeah. to get okay. you. Yeah. Ms. Broussard. Uh, Mr. Uh, Goshison asked someone to debate him on this, so I'm going to take him up at his uh, thing. Uh, you know, I get the, the point of not having people sitting here waiting for an item just to be tabled, but as Mr. Brown said, how do we know when an item is going to be tabled? 
as Mr. Eugene said, you're basically saying, oh, we know ahead of time it's going to be deleted or tabled. Sometimes we get information that we assume it's going to be that, that you're going to get eight votes, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, that it is going to be. So you, you're... You're taking away the the public's opportunity to express. I mean, what if what if a council member has a point that would change our mind of whether it should be tabled that night or not? What if a member of the public changes has some a point to make that changes our mind of whether it should be tabled or deleted that night? Just like when I made made the the comment about the Lorm thing, I said after discussion, I'm going to be making a motion to table it let the discussion happen if there was someone here who wanted to discuss it it, it could have been that we changed our mind and we didn't want to table it but to say that we don't even hear from what anybody has to say i just don't think that's the proper way to go i do agree with mr Sheely. we've done a great job in managing our agendas and managing our time we went from three meetings a month to that were four and five hours long to two meetings that now can happen in two hours um, so I, I think this is just another step. I, I watch every line we put in the newspaper. I think this is another motion, another vote. We're going to pay more publishing costs. I just don't think it's a necessary step. Good point. That's it. Michael Landry. If, if this ordinance, could we make it the same way we do if, to expand the agenda to hold the entire council? has to vote yes on it. Sure. You can do that. Yep. And it just take the one. One uh, to, 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 to stop it. That's, that's all I need because I could support it in that, in that way if the entire council would approve moving it. Yeah, I understand. Mr. Olivier? No, oh, I'm sorry. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Gosh, yeah, to respond to Ms. Broussard, Ms. Broussard made it seem like we never had the discussion. That's the point of the committees. We do have the discussions mm -hmm. there, and it, the public do come, and they're given the opportunity to participate in the discussion in the committees. So to say that we're not given an opportunity, this is not a doom and gloom <coughs> resolution, Ms. Broussard. This resolution is just to keep an honesty. When, you, when the gentleman gave a credit about this council doing a good job as far as the debate and things, keep in mind that the rules that we changed helped to do that going from not allowing things to get out of committee because one council member wanted it. I mean, let's be realistic here. I mean, there are some things that people put on the agenda, yes, I disagree with, but in no way, shape, or form did I think, or Andy thought that we were putting this to stop uh, a certain topic from coming up here from debate. I mean, just like you said earlier, you had information previous to the council coming here that you knew there was not enough information that the sheriff wanted to get with the parish president. Well, look how smooth that went. There was no debate even asked because we knew at the end of the day that all the information is not in. So it does work. I mean, you proved your own case. You proved my own case right there when you just said that. So my point is, you know, Mr. Eugene also said, I believe, you know, uh, about the Sunshine Law. How many times you make phone calls about agenda items before we get here? It, it happens. It's part of the case. I don't think anyone's doing a walk and quorum with it. But this is just adding another step to making sure that we're, we're moving and we're being conservative on the time that we allowed here. So, I mean, I'm not trying to squish any of your travel uh, things, Mr. Eugene, if you think that's what it is. I just want to say that for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Boy, the words get thrown. Mr. Dugov. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, from what I can understand now, if there's an agenda item that uh, I don't think we need to discuss, I can't just say take it off the agenda. The whole council makes that decision. We're all involved in the process of whether that agenda item stays on or gets off. I, it's, it's not a runaway uh, council, and uh, I, I don't see where it would hurt. Thank you. Mr. Trahal. Call for the question. <coughs> We debated. We, we know how we're going to go. Let's go. Okay, so we're going to have uh, we're going to have a vote on the if we're going to go to the call of the question. Uh, oh, I have a motion. We're calling for the question, so we're going to vote on that. I have a uh, second by Mr. Brown. Okay. Okay. So roll call. If we're right, right. 
Uh, Mr. Brown, Mr. Pollard, Michael, Berwick, Napier. Voting on the call of the question. Once you hear a while, Lloyd, you'll catch on. Okay, that motion passes. Okay, now we're moving on to uh, summary nine, 40, 40. Correct. So now we're going on to the vote of the uh, summary number um, 4916. Is everybody up with that? We're voting on summary 4916. Give us one second. We're loading up the computer. Okay, begin voting. We're, correct. Um, let's see, that motion uh, fails. Okay, ordinance summary number 4917 introduced by Paul G. Landry, District 7. An ordinance amending Chapter 2 of the Iberia Parish compiled ordinances in order to establish a policy requiring the engagement of the necessary professionals to conduct an additional compliance review of agreed upon procedures of one board commission department annually in conjunction with the parish's annual re audit. We have a motion by Ms. Broussard, a second by Mr. Olivier. Ms. Broussard. Yeah, um, this actually was put up by uh, Mr. Paul Landry and uh, he and I had a couple of discussions about it. Um, I don't think it's a bad idea at all. I know that um, there's a lot of state laws, a lot of, of things that go into procurement and everything else. And, um, you know, it, this is not a bad thing for us to alternate between board and commissions and make sure that they're all following our procedures, state procedures. Um, we surely don't want to get in trouble for one of our boards or commissions doing something that's not in compliance with state law. I know Mr. Reshort is not looking to go to jail anytime Absolutely soon. Not. So, uh, <laughs> no, no shackles. Okay, um, Mr. Olivier. Hmm? Okay. Um, all right, and uh, I was the second user, and um, actually, I just think it gives a lot of transparency. We go a little deeper, you know, and uh, like that. Basically, what Natalie said, just making sure all the rules are followed deep down underneath the audit instead of just on the surface so any other discussion it shows a lot of transparency to our people oh i'm sorry miss kimber um no i would let this year go you know since because i know we got the end of the year audit coming up uh natalie would you like to do a substitute maybe to a ask what what date would you put on that like They do, they, they picked, um, this was our first year having to do that, and so he did um, through, uh, through October, and then they came in December and did it. That way they get a jump start and kind of finish all of that work um, and test all of our controls and stuff at that particular point. So, I mean, if y'all want to look at, you know, doing those in conjunction with the regular agreed upon procedures, and then we can just focus on that one agency. Okay. So it would be commencing with audit year 2019 which would be actually 18. 18. Well, 18. 18. It would be the audit of 19 for, for year 2018. It's going to begin in 18. Yeah, oh, they begin. Yeah, because they do it in like December. All right. So it would be so it would be commencing no. 2018. Right. No. Okay. Is uh Mr. Olivier is that okay with you? Okay, we have a substitute to add the date. Roll call. <coughs> That motion passes. Summary number 4918 introduced by Paul G. Landry, an ordinance amending the boundaries of sales tax district number one of Iberia Parish, state of Louisiana, and providing for other matters in connection therewith. I have a motion by Mr. Olivier, a second by Ms. Broussard. Mr. Olivier? Pass. Ms. Broussard? 
understanding that we have some more advertising and stuff that needs to be done so we're not actually ready to move forward with that is that correct mr Sheely? that's correct i think maybe mr acres prepared a resolution that basically calls for advertisements oh i'm sorry i thought okay. no 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 this is critical that this be adopted today okay. the, we're okay. talking you're thinking of the economic development district oh, yes oh, yes jason could you go ahead and explain okay what the sales oh, sorry i was trying to stay quiet oh, on this, this one you right we are yeah. on the wrong yes. one <laughs> don't stay quiet <laughs> sorry go ahead um this is the companion to, to the uh, election, the sales tax election that was uh, approved to be held on November November 8th. This is the sales um, tax district. Uh, later this year, November 6th or 8th, I forget which one it is. But this mm -hmm. is the sales tax district that currently encompasses uh, all of the parish except for what is contained within the Atchafalaya Basin Levy District. This will change the boundaries to be all of the parish excluding the current <coughs> boundaries of the incorporated municipalities, which is what was anticipated by this council when it approved the election call. Okay. Any any questions from Mr. Jason? Sure. This is basically setting up the district for the road uh, tax that will be voted on in November. And, and I do want to, again, stress, I'm sorry, that this uh, is a critical part of that election call that took place okay. two weeks I ago. Understand. Thank you. Mr. Olivier? I'm good. Uh, Mr. Dugas. Yeah, Mr. Aker, so this is actually um, making the taxing district, sales tax district larger? It's pulling in more area? I, I, I'll be honest, I haven't compared the, the square mileage of it. It is actually, it is restricting the district to only the unincorporated areas of the parish. Only the unincorporated areas. So the district as it currently exists actually includes a majority of the city of New Iberia. It includes Jinrette, um and a couple others. Uh, but it, um, this will wipe those completely out of the district so that those voters within those municipalities will not vote in the election in November on this particular matter. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, roll call. That pa motion passes. Summary number 4919, introduced by Planning Commission, an ordinance amending the Iberia Parish pl Zoning Ordinance to approve the reclassification of property <coughs> at 103040 Generate Road and the two adjacent lots known as parcel number 03004430 from single family resident or one to mixed residential or two located in District 11. All is reviewed and approved by the Iberia Parish Regional Zoning Commission. I have a motion by Mr. Napier and a second by Mr. Trahan. Mr. Napier. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Sonia, help me remember. <laughs> help me, please help me. Uh, did, <laughs> didn't, if I'm not, the, the the lady that had the problems that's her right. the, with with the uh, but this seems to be more than that in here there's three lots right there that fit into the same so, so we're gonna, is we're that the one there. where the trail is up on yes. the road too yes so so we change in that whole thing so they're going to be able to keep those two trailers and then that so there will be three there right Yeah, right. Okay. There's an abandoned home. In the so middle. The treatment plant was buried prior to the when you yes. buried. That's the one we yeah. I had a couple of them in front of me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Now, I just wanted to make sure because so when she came. Insert the addresses. I have them from press. I just don't have them. Here. Because the last meet at, at the, at the, um, um, the other, the last meeting, it was just about her, approving her, right? At the committee. Okay, so in the planning, and uh, obviously, uh, the planning was good with that. Okay, all right, I would just want to make sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, Mr. Trahan. Good, they, they got it answered. Okay, any other? Um, Okay, roll call. 
That motion passes. Okay, summary number 115 introduced by the clerk of the council. <coughs> a resolution ordering and calling a special elections on November 6, 2018 primary and December 8, 2018 general to fill a vacancy in the Office of Constable Justice of the Peace Ward 3 of Iberia <coughs> Parish created by the resignation of Mr. Benjamin Hoffpower, all in accordance with LARS 18583. Note a motion to, to suspend the rules will need to be adopted as this item was not considered by the executive committee. So a quick comment before that, um, to get it to fall into place, we couldn't go to committee. So we're gonna go ahead and vote on suspending the rules that way we can make all the timetables. So I'm looking for a motion to suspend the rules. I have a motion by Ms. Broussard and a second by Mr. Olivier. Ms. Broussard? No discussion. Okay, Mr. Olivier. No discussion. Okay. Um, to suspend uh, the rules Eight to suspend the rules. No other motion. Uh, roll call. Mr. Francis. Okay, that motion passes. Uh, now I need a motion for summary number 115. I have a motion by Ms. Broussard and a second by Mr. Gosselin. Ms. Broussard. Well, we don't have a choice. We, he resigned. We have to call a special election. Okay, you the best. <laughs> Uh, next, Mr. Gonsalam. I agree, Mr. Booth. We need to get this position occupied as soon as we can, barring any rules, differentials. Okay, no other discussion. Roll call. That motion passes. Summary number 117 introduced by the Clerk of the Council a resolution author authorizing the designation of De La Iberian as the official journal for Iberia Parish for the period of July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019. I have a motion by Ms. Broussard, a second by Mr. Gonsalam. Ms. Broussard. Wave. Mr. Gonsalam. Wave. Roll call. That motion passes. Uh, going on to summary number 118, introduced by the clerk of the council, a resolution authorizing the execution of a contract with the Daily Iberian for the publication of classified advertisements for the period of July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019 at a cost of 9.89 .9 per column inch. I have a motion by Mr. Napier, a second by Michael Landry. Mr. Napier. No comment. Mr. Michael Landry. Please. No other discussion, roll call. A motion mm. passes. Summary number 119, introduced by the Sewage District Number 1, a resolution amending the 2018 Sewer District Number 1 fund budget in the amount of $3 million to accept loan funds and expenditures in accordance with a DEQ loan application, all to be funded with DEQ loan proceeds. I have a motion by Ms. Broussard, a second by Mr. Olivier. Ms. Broussard. Wave. Mr. Olivier? I have one question on the Did we ever consider maybe talking to uh, USDA about some grant funding or any kind of? Yes, we have. And, uh, no, no efforts? Uh, it's a negotiation. It's a negotiation. Yeah. Okay, okay. It, it could come in after the fact. It could. Yeah, okay, good. That's my question. Any other discussion? Roll call. Uh, that motion passes. Uh, summary number 120 introduced by the Planning Commission, a resolution granting preliminary approval of Palico subdivision consisting of four lots to be located off Leonce Terrio Road and a private road, District 3. I have a motion by Mr. Olivier, a second by Michael Landry. Mr. Olivier? I'm good. Mr. Michael, roll call. Well, uh, Mr. Landry. Oh, one minute, no roll call. Mr. Sheely. You, you might want to consider <coughs> uh, delaying this. S summary number 4921. Same. Uh, it, that's being published. 
actually rezones that property. And, and I, 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 I believe that the okay. subdivision of that property is dependent upon it being rezoned. Um, you know, Mr. Sheely, you, you saved us at a couple meetings ago when we were going to chop up some lots and we had to send it back to planning and zoning. So um, I would go with that. Um, okay. I have. Um, and I guess I would ask, uh, Madam Clerk, when, when will that ordinance 4921 come up for vote? That'll be at the next meeting. That's right. Okay. Then. That would be the date to table. table. We will have satisfied all the Yeah, 120. Okay, before I take Mr. Uh, Gonsalan, Ms. Broussard has a question. Yeah, why are we approving a subdivision with a private road? Mr. Sonia, can you help us with that? The, the way they subdivide it, this, the, there's four lots there. Two of them are to have access to uh, Leon's Terrier Road, and there's two lots that are in the back that would not. So the, when they, they stated they wanted a private road, we put in um, requirements that the mouth of the driveway had to be uh, sufficient. They can't just, you know, 90 into the road. And there's got to be a turnaround at the end, and there's specific width. There's a 20-foot road surface and a 10-foot drainage and utility easement. Um, we're going to try to be, I guess, consistent with that in the future. The other thing we did was made them put in the plat that at no point in time would the parish ever accept responsibility for that road. It is incumbent upon the property owners to maintain the road. We will never take uh, ownership of the road. You take on to the next meeting. So we have a we have a motion on the floor by Mr. Gonsalan to table to the uh, Okay, go ahead, Mr. Gonsalan. I think, I think, I think the rules that you have just interpreted to this council are, are, are very valid, and this is the first time I hear of some changes that plan is only doing as far as from a private road standpoint. This is a real critical issue when you're talking about a private road. Mm -hmm. This can get a lot of people in trouble if we don't do it right. So, I agree with your thought process. I'm going to request a table, but I need to see those rules regularly in writing. And so that we can review them and make sure that we're all on the same page because we don't want to get in trouble with private rules because they got a lot of private rules in this parish mm -hmm. that have, you know, went beyond yeah. what they were supposed to have done. And I just don't want to get called in and saying, hey, I did this because of this, but I want to make sure we're clear. I like the idea. I like, I like what you're doing, but let's make sure we got and, it. And just we, we did visit with Public Works and uh, with yeah. the fire district. Get this and then we could, sure. uh, Dean Watney was, was I agree. involved in this also. Okay. So it's, it's actually written on the plat. Um, okay. And to go further than that, I think it's required to be on the deed also. Yeah. The we suggested, again, remember, I'm not a fan of private roads. Me neither. But, but, but I think it's incumbent that the public know. And so the best two places to put it is on the, the uh, uh, dedication of the subdivision to say it's a, a basically a private road not to be maintained by, by the uh, parish it's the responsibility of, of the uh, adjoining landowners. We wanted to go further and also put it in the deed, <coughs> require that it be put in the deed, because you're going to have a lot of people who buy property who are never going to go look at that plant. But they're going to have to sign that deed, and at least if it's in the deed, that this is, you know, please note, you know, this is a private road, and it's not going to be maintained by the parish government. If we're going to have private Just roads, private you've done everything you possibly could do to make the public yeah, understand that's a private road, not going to be taken over by you, not going to be maintained by you in the future. And to correct me if I'm wrong, but currently in our very past, you cannot sell lots on a private road, right? Currently. Is that correct? Or I'm, I'm not, asking. I'm not willing to say that. I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. Okay. All right. I, 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 I cannot say that with 100% certainty. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. Table to the... Okay, we have uh, a table. June. We have a table by Mr. Gonsalam, and I have a second by Ms. Broussard. And when Mr. Napier gets back, we're going to go ahead and have a roll call on this item. No, no, no. You can start... Brian, you come and vote? Right. Come in.
We have a we had a we have a citizen downstairs wanting to get inside, so we're sending someone to open the door. Okay, roll call. Roll call on the uh, table. Did you press begin for me? Okay, that motion passes. Um, don't anybody get up. Uh, we have done in the past different things when we call for the adjournment. We're going to do a roll call on that. So I'm asking for a motion on the adjournment. Mr. Trump, move to adjourn. I have a motion by Trump and Olivier. Roll call. Okay, roll, Brian. Gonsalan. Gosha Sam. Michael Landry. Gosh, uh, adjournment. adjournment. We vote on adjournment starting today. Gosh, San Brown. You get to vote twice. That motion passes. No one gets up. We're going right into joint committee.